So this here is going to be a painting video on how to paint a Space Marine Captain in Gravis Armor. So this is the uh, older model. There's a new one coming out now, but uh, we painted up the older one here. The Dark Imperium box or the uh, No No Fear box. Uh, in any case, we finished him up. And if you like the way he looks, if you think he looks pretty good, or if you want to paint one uh, similar to this, just stay tuned and uh, you'll see how we did it. If you like videos like this, please feel free to leave a like or a comment on the channel and uh, we'll respond to almost all comments. Otherwise than that, we will see you in a few minutes when we start painting this model. So this here is going to be a painting video on our, our Space Marine Captain in Gravis Armor. So as you can see here, we've got them all done up. We've base coated them in two different colors. So the first color we base coated them in is in Lead Belcher and we did half the model with that. He isn't actually connected. So we've done half the model in Lead Belcher. That gives us access to all the armor and things like that. And then we did the other half with Wraithbone. And so that lets us do the cape and a couple of other brighter colors. But in, in the end, we'll come back and we'll do Lead Belcher over um, the metallics down the road. Um, but first thing we're gonna do is focus on the cape. So now the first thing we're gonna do with the cape is we're going to start painting the underside of it here and we're going to do that with some rack earth flesh and that'll give us a nice base coat to start doing our model with so we'll do this and be back here in a few minutes once that's all finished so for our gravis captain's cloak we're finished with the rack earth flesh base we only did the one side of course this side we'll come back and do with the the regal red color. But while we're waiting here, what we're gonna do is start shading it with some seraphim sepia. And we're just gonna put that in all of our folds. Now you won't see much of this once the cloak's connected again. Because once the cloak is connected, um, this will all be hidden behind the armor and the legs and the body and such. But because we've separated it out, we'll do a good job on it now. And what we want to do is fill in all of those cracks and let that just run down there. Just like so. Not as worried about the high points, but we are going to come back and dry brush those with a highlight in a few minutes. So now with the shade finished and nice and dry now, we've got some uh, darker recesses in the, in the uh, creases here. So what we're going to do now is add that um, highlight layer. So with that, we're going to use some um, U-Shapti Bone here. And we're just going to dry brush that lightly right over the entire model, just like so. So we'll do that now. So as you can see here, it's fairly light. And we're just going to dry brush that right across the model here. Hitting the high spots, just like you see there. And then blending them in a little bit at a time here. So we'll keep picking away at this for now and we'll see what it looks like when we're finished. But we're just basically going to do this nice light coat over and over and over again until we build up the nice bright layer that we like to have. So this is our captain now that the Shabti bone is finished. And so what we did and as you can see, we've got a much brighter uh, highlight layer now, but we still darken the recesses where the shade was. So what we're going to do now is add one more highlight layer on that of just some Screaming Skull, which is a little bit brighter still. And we're just going to tap that along the high edges. So we'll just blend it in just up on this edge, maybe over here on the parts that are sticking out and along the edge of the coat. We're just going to use that nice light layer of Screaming Skull. And then just gently blend it in just like that and as you can see it's a little bit brighter than it was before so we'll do the rest of that and be back in a moment so now that the inside of the cloak is done we could pretty much join the two models together like so the only problem is that we didn't paint the inside back end of the armor which is here so we're going to do that next uh, so we can join the two models, use the painting stand, and then do 
the cloaks and the swords and things like that. So before we do that now, we're going to work on the armor. And we've got many videos on the channel on how to do the armor. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I'll link to those in the description and I'll link to those above. But effectively what we're going to do is a dry brush of Rune Fang Steel over the base coated lead belcher. And then we're going to add a watered down layer of Achillean green contrast paint over that. And then a watered down layer of Warp Lightning over that. Uh, and that'll get us our Alpha Legion armor color. And then we'll meet back here again once the armor is done. And if you want any further details, like I said, just click the link above or in the channel or in the, the comments down below. And we'll see you in a few minutes when that's all up to date. So this is our armor now that we finished with our contrast paints. So we did the Akelian green and the warp lightning together. And we got what's in front of you right here. So now what we're going to do is take a little bit of Abaddon black and start going over all the, the uh, links in the armor, these locations here, just coloring in the underlying bodysuit and all the joints. So we'll do that now. We'll meet back here in a few minutes when that's done. So now we're finished with the Abaddon black joints. And as you can see, we've done them all pretty nicely here. So they definitely stand out a little bit darker than they were and all the bodysuit at the, the joint break here now. So the last thing we're going to do in our armor before we reconnect the two pieces of the model is to take some Stormhost Silver and just go along all of the trim, lighting it all back up. So all of our Imperial Aquilas as well as all of the trim of the armor and any other pieces that we see floating around that we want to do. Um, say the um, the Aquila on the knee as well as the one on the arm. So we'll do all those now with Stormhost Silver and be back in a few moments. This is our model now that we finished with all of our trim. And as you can see, we did the Aquila on the front as well as on the leg. We did the one on the shoulder, clean that one up nicely, as well as all of the uh, shoulder pauldron trim and anything like that. So with that we've finished with our uh, trim and we're going to move on to trying to get these two models connected. So the next thing we're going to do is take a little bit of corn red and start working on our uh, cloak here. So we're going to give our cloak a nice base coat of corn red and then we'll be back here in a few minutes once that's done and nice and dried so we can start shading and highlighting. So this is our captain now that we finished with the corn red cloak and we've got a nice uniform color now. Uh, I came from having two layers of the of the watered down paint but it looks pretty nice. So now we have to add some shades and some highlights. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take a little bit of Evil Sun Scarlet. And we're just going to try to brush that onto the, the higher points. Just nice and gently, we're just going to put them on all the highlight higher areas here. And we're just going to blend them in. something like that. So we're slowly building up a two-tone layer. So we're going to keep going at this for a little bit. I'll we'll meet back here again in a few minutes once that's all built up. So we'll get something like that just gently forming here now. And as you can see there's definitely a different tone 
between the high point here and the low point there. So we'll do more of that and we'll be back here in, in a few minutes once that's built up the way we like. So the next thing we're going to do is take some Retributor armor and we're going to do over say this golden halo and then this trinket here on his mid waist and then probably the hilt of the sword and a few other details here and there just to um, add a bit more color to the model. So we'll do that with Retributor armor and we'll be back in a moment. So this here is our captain in his Gravis armor now that we finished with our Retributor armor color. So we did the iron halo on the above here, the golden halo. We did the sword hilt, just as you can see here. We did the trinket here that's hanging from his belt. And then we also did the um, decorations on his cape. Uh, there's two on the inside as well as some on the backside over here. So all of those uh, base colors are done, but we want to start bringing them out. So we're going to take some Agrax Earthshade now. And what we're going to do is shade in all of that gold as well as the uh, corn red sword hilt we've got here. So we're going to do all of that now. We'll also probably do a little bit of these um, decorations here. So that'll just help bring out uh, some detail. And we'll probably use it right out of the pot. Although on this red part here, we may use a couple of watered down layers just because we don't want to uh, affect the cape itself, which we're finished with. So we'll do that now and be back in a few minutes. So now that we finished with our Agrax Earthshade, as you can see, these buckles here stand out much better. We've got a little bit of a darker trim around it. Uh, as well as these um, trinkets here, um, as well as the golden halo, the sword hilt, and things like that. So what we're going to do now is add a highlight layer just to brighten that back up. We'll take some Liberator Gold, and we're just going to dry brush that. Right over all of these gold lined items just to brighten them right back up again and make them a little bit shinier here so we'll keep going at this be back in a few minutes and uh, be ready for our next color so now that the um, highlight layer on the gold is finished and it's nice and dry now we're going to move on to our other metallic color that we've got here so we're going to just sort of talk about this and then just do them all at once because it's uh, it's mundane and we've done this in every video we've had. But we're going to do all the actual metallics. So say this chain right here, the bolt gun, the blade of the sword we'll touch on and then we'll come back on it with some extra colors later. Um, all of this uh, ammo strand as well here, the, uh, the ammo feed belt, um, all of the little vents and things on the backpack, and then any other little particular metallics that we want to do. So what we're going to do first is finish cleaning them up with lead belcher. It was based with lead belcher so that's the color it's on it now. We're going to just clean it up, get any spot where the uh, armor color, trim or anything else has got over it. So we'll do that. We're going to shade it all with Nuon Oil. And then we are going to add the highlight layer of Iron Breaker. So we're going to do those three in a row. and that should create your base layer and then your depth and then your highlights. So we'll do that all now and then be back here again in a few minutes once that's done and you'll see the another layer of color on the model. So here's our captain now that the um, metallics are finished and so we did the bolter as well as all of the um, chain feed armor here. We actually glued the rest of the model together because now that the metallics are done such as this power cable and these things inside here. Now that they're all finished, we're free to move on to our last, or one of our last things. What we're gonna do now is take a little bit of Mephiston Red, and we're just gonna do the two little lenses in the helmet there, and we'll probably put a dollop of Evil Sun Scarlet just to give a little bit of a lens flare glare there, and then we'll, um, We'll probably be back in a few minutes, and then uh, we're definitely going to do the base and flock the base, and then we'll uh, we'll be back after all that's done. So 
So we're back. We did the base uh, back to black again, whereas it was uh, it was uh, lead belcher when we had uh, primed the model. So we brought that back to black now. We haven't flocked it yet. We'll do that in a few moments. We also did the eyes. So as you can see there, they're all lit up the way uh, we wanted them to. And you can just pick out that little lens flare. So we finished that. So from here, we're going to move on to this power sword we've got here. And we're going to make it blue, I believe. Because it stands so high, we want it to draw the eye. Uh, so we do want to light it up significantly to draw some attention to our model. So we're going to really light it up nicely, I think. So the first thing we're going to do is base it with Thousand Suns Blue. Now, we could also use um, Incubi Darkness. Um, either one would work. Whichever one we do use, we're going to use the other as a highlight or a uh, shade, I guess. So we'll do Thousand Suns Blue, and we'll show you what we're going to do with the other one in a minute. So this is going to take a nice thin layer because the blade is so uh, thin to begin with, we don't want to leave runs. So just a thin watered-down layer or two of Thousand Suns Blue just to build up some of the color and we'll be back in a few minutes. So this is our model now. The first coat of Thousand Suns Blue Water Down is there. I'm going to do a second one now. Nice base color. We'll leave it dry and we'll be back here in a few minutes. So now that that's pretty much dry and it's okay if it's a little bit wet because we do want to blend. We're going to take a little bit of that Incubi Darkness we were talking about and having it super watered down. And a little bit on the off side of the sword here. Making sure to respect the midline. Then we'll do the same at the bottom of this side. A little bit of water to blend up the end there. And just like that. So we have a light side and a dark side of both. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side with the opposite ends. So here's a sword after we finish with the Incubi Darkness. So you can definitely see that there's a darker side and a lighter side. And same on the bottom, but they're just opposite. And then same on the other side of the sword. Like so. Darker here, lighter there, so forth and so on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add another highlight of Temple Guard Blue and we're going to do the lighter side up. It's super watered down but we're going to make sure we respect the midline start at the top just sort of blend it off there and this side will start at the bottom and blend it up. A little bit of water there and wet blend that. Add a few more watered down layers. 
and we'll just keep waiting for that to dry, blend, dry, blend. We'll be back here in a few minutes. So this is our power sword now that we've finished with the blending. So we've got the Temple Guard blue on this end, the Incubi Darkness on that end, and then we've got the Thousand Suns blue in the center. So with that, we've got a nice uh, sort of two-tone power sword going on. And now we're going to take some Gauss Blaster Green with a very, very, very watered down layer to almost being a glaze. And we'll do the same thing as the Temple Guard Blue, starting at the tip. Just working it down and working it back up toward the tip there, like so. That's really going to lighten that up a bit as it dries. We'll do that layer a few more times. Running it up and then running it back down again. Like so. So we'll do that a few more times, brighten that up, and be back in a few minutes. So here's our power sword as we're finished with the Gauss Blaster Green highlight. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. Uh, there is some sharp demarcations on some of the color. So we're going to blend all those back in using our contrast paint, Talisar Blue. And with an exceptionally runny layer, we're just going to put a nice coat over everything. Treat it like it's a glaze. So we're going to wash off half of what's there. That really blends it in nicely and cleans up that color for us. So once we finish that, we'll start putting an edge highlight of Gauss Blaster Green on right around the edges and try to draw in that midline if we can. And then we'll be back here in a minute when all that's finished. This is our sword now that we finished with our Gauss Blaster Green uh, edge highlight and the center highlight as well. So all we did was use the side of the brush very, very lightly with a dry brush, and then do the same with either end here. So what we can do now is just bring out uh, a couple of little spots along that line, uh, a little brighter still. So we'll use a little bit of white scar here. And we're gonna dry brush that on very, very lightly. And then just like this, just dry brush on a little bit just to add a little bit more brightness to that. So we'll finish up touching up here, then we'll probably do the base and be back in a few minutes when it's all done. So this is our, here is the final model now that we finished with the Space Marine Captain. So as you can see, we based him, we finished up the sword, we added the transfers and we clear coated them. So this is pretty much the final product. So if you found your yours turned out as good, if you like this kind of video, if you're happy with the painting, the design, or anything like that, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. If, uh, if you liked it and uh, you want to help out the channel, please feel free to leave a like, leave a comment if you painted one that looks similar. And otherwise than that, we will see you at our next painting video. Uh, if you want to stay tuned for a few minutes, you will definitely see some other clips and some other angles of this model from a few different points of view. Otherwise than that, we will see you at the next painting video. Thanks.